Okay, hey everybody, welcome back to Crazy Kids Coding Classes. Today we're going to be do, doing something new. Um, we'll be building a platformer game today and also a game that can go through multiple levels. <clears throat> so this is a little bit more advanced. So if you're new to coding, I would recommend checking out our level one coding videos first. If you look on the video thumbnail, it says level one or we have a level one playlist. So if you've never coded before, this will be a little bit tough. But if you've done some coding on Scratch, you're ready to step it up to the next level. This is going to be a really fun class for you. So let me go ahead and share my screen. So this is our starter pack. There is a link to the starter pack in the video description on YouTube. So go underneath the video, pull that link up. It'll take you to a screen that looks exactly like this. Um, I recommend having two screens, one where you can watch the YouTube video and one where you can be building your own game. That's going to make it a lot easier so you don't have to pause and go back and forth. But if you only have one screen, you can do that, okay? So as you can see, we're doing a Minecraft game today. Um, the first things, and if you've done some of the older videos with me, you know I like to pick out my background first and add my music. Both of those things are going to take place over here on the stage. Um, so it's just the three coding blocks you'll need for your music, a green flag, a forever loop, and then in the sound circle, you'll want to grab that top block. Um, in the starter pack, I've got some Minecraft music loaded in here for you, but you can always use whatever music you want. I'm going to delete this today so that as you're watching the video, you don't need to listen to my music and have it overlap with yours. Then up in the top left corner, you've got your backdrop tab. Um, this is where there's some different Minecraft backdrops. These are all pretty similar on this starter pack. But if you'd like to come down here to the bottom left corner where it says choose a backdrop, this will take you to the Scratch library. Or if you have your own Minecraft backdrop you'd like to upload, go ahead right here to upload a backdrop. And you can upload some of your own images as well. <clears throat> or feel free to use this uh, cloud one that I've got here, okay? All right. First thing we need to do is we need to get Steve um, moving back and forth and jumping up and down. But this code is going to be a little bit more advanced because today we need to code in some um, variables like X velocity and gravity. This is going to make it so that Steve can actually land on our platforms and that he'll fall down when he's not on the platform. And when he hits the platform, he stops falling. It's a bit of a, a technical code, but it's a lot of fun. So follow along with me, okay? First thing is make sure you're on your Steve Sprite and go ahead and bring out that green flag. And then every time our game starts, let's figure out where Steve's going to begin, okay? Because we're working with levels today, we want him to start over here on the left side of the screen. I'm going to put him just up a little bit from the ground. And when I turn my flag on, he's going to fall down to the ground once our code is complete. So let's add a go to X and Y block here in the blue motion circle, fifth block down. That way, he'll always start there at the beginning of the game. Okay, next thing we need to do is we need to go create a gravity variable. So go down to your variable circle, make a variable, and it doesn't really matter what it's called. I prefer to use gravity. If you have a different name that you'd like to use, that's great. So when the game begins, we're going to set our gravity to zero. This means he's not falling, he's not flying, he's just sitting there at zero. Okay, so grab that set block and set gravity to zero. Okay, now go ahead and grab a forever loop. And then inside this forever loop, we need a block that says change Y by my gravity variable. So if we go to our blue motion circle and we're looking for that block that says change Y by 10, it's the seventh block up from the bottom. But instead of 10, we want the word gravity here. So let's go back to our variable circle and pull out our little gravity variable. Okay, now what this says is we're telling Steve Hey, Steve, I always want you to change Y, so that's going up and down, by whatever my gravity variable is set to. Well, right when the green flag is clicked, our gravity is set to zero. Now let's add some code that says, if I press the up button, I want my gravity to be a bigger positive number, which is going to allow Steve to go upwards. And remember, a negative number will make him go down. Okay, so we need a few loops. Go to your orange control circle and grab the if then else loop. That's the fifth block down and put that underneath your blue block there. Make sure it's inside the forever loop. Then we also need the fourth block down, which is our if then loop. And that's going to go right underneath your shadow on that if then else loop. 
So make sure it's above the word else, okay? So double check your loops and make sure they're in the same place as mine because if they're not in the right spot, then your code won't work very well. Okay, so right here, we have a sprite called platforms. This is the actual ground and the platform you can see right here. And we're going to create several different ways we can make our platforms look today, okay? So I just wanted to show you that those, those platforms are not part of the background. It is its own sprite. So go back to your code, back to Steve, and let's add to our code that if Steve is touching the platform sprite, well, then we want our gravity set to zero. So go to your sensing circle, grab your touching block, stick that in inside that top shadow, and let's switch that to say platforms. Okay, if touching the platforms, then what? Set gravity to zero. So go to your variable circle, grab your set block, and this is gonna go on top of that if then loop, okay? So set my gravity to zero. Now this little if then loop, this is going to be our jump code. We want this to say, if I press on my up arrow, set gravity to a big number, a big positive number to make me jump upwards. So let's go to our sensing circle, grab your key space pressed block, stick that in the shadow, and this is whatever button or whatever key you wanna to press to jump. And I like using the up arrow, but if you wanna use spacebar, that is great too. Okay, if the key up arrow is pressed, then what? Well, let's set our gravity to a different number. So go grab another set gravity block from your variable circle. And for now, go ahead and just put a seven here. Once we get the whole code created, we'll pause and we'll make adjustments because you might wanna make your guy jump higher or lower than mine, okay? But for now, Seven is kind of a good base to start with. All right, now inside this little else section here, this means whenever I'm not touching the platforms and whenever I'm not jumping with my up arrow, what should be happening? Well, whenever those two things aren't happening, that means my guy is floating in the air. So I want him to always be falling, okay? He's constantly falling unless he hits a platform or unless I press on my up arrow. So. Go to your dark orange variable circle, grab your change block, okay? Be careful, make sure it's not the set block. This time you want the change block. And we need to change our gravity by a negative number that is under one. So go ahead and put a negative 0.4 for now. Later you can adjust that, but make sure it's a point something. You never want it bigger than a one because it'll go all crazy, okay? <clears throat> I know because I've tested it out, but yeah, make sure it's a negative point. Point four. That part is very, very important. Okay, that's all we need for our gravity code. Let's not test it out too much yet because we can't really get Steve moving side to side. Um, so all I can really do right now is jump. I mean, you can test it out. Turn your flag on and you can see that he's jumping up and down. The cool thing about a gravity code is as he falls, the longer he's falling, he'll pick up speed and he'll fall faster and faster, just like in real life. It's a bit more realistic looking than the really basic beginner jumping code. So it's a really fun one. Okay, let's build our code for moving side to side. So we need a new green flag. And for this code, we'll just need one forever loop and two if then loops, okay? Those if then loops are going to be stacked on top of each other inside your forever loop. Okay. Each of those if then loops will be for your left and right arrows. But the first thing we need to do is we wanna set our X velocity to zero when the game begins. So let's go to our variable circle, make a new variable, call this X velocity. If you don't wanna type that whole thing out, you could just call it X V for X velocity or something similar. Okay, grab your set block, put that right under the green flag and let's set our X velocity to zero, okay? So how fast are we going side to side? Okay, now let's go get our right and left arrow keys. So go to the sensing circle, grab the seventh block down, which is key space pressed, stick that inside the shadows there, and let's do our right arrow on top and our left arrow on the bottom. Okay, now if I press my right arrow or my left arrow, I wanna change my X velocity variable, okay? I want those to be a positive number for moving to the right and a negative number for moving to the left. So go to your variable circle, grab the change block and bring out two of those and place them inside your if then loops. Now we're not doing gravity right now. We need to change both of those to say X velocity. All right, so let's keep our right arrow at one and let's do our left arrow at a negative one. We'll adjust those in a few minutes if you wanna move side to side faster, but let's just start with that for now. 
Okay, next thing is I want Steve turning side to side so that it looks a little more realistic rather than him just facing one direction the whole game. So let's add the point in direction 90 block. Go to your blue motion circle, grab that point in direction 90 block. This is going to go on top of both of your orange blocks. And remember, your right arrow stays the same at 90. Your left arrow needs to switch to a negative 90. So you can either type that in or swing that arrow around. Now, I'm going to turn my flag on. Now when I hit my right and left arrows, arrows, see how Steve is turning side to side? That's going to look a lot more realistic. Okay, next thing. Steve has several costumes. Check out the costume tab. If I flip Steve through these quickly, it's going to look like he's walking. It'll create an optical illusion to look like he's walking. So go to your look circle, grab the sixth block down, which is your next costume block, and let's put one of those inside both of our if-then loops. That way, whenever we press our right and left arrows, Steve will start flipping through those costumes, and it'll look much more, real much more realistic when he's walking. Okay, we just have a few blocks left. I know this is a lot of code. Hang in there. All right, finally, let's go to the variable circle and grab your set block. Now watch where I place this. It goes inside my forever loop underneath my bottom if then loop, okay? I need to set my x velocity. So make that say set x velocity. And then we're gonna put a little math equation right in here on this circle with the zero on it. Go to your green operator circle and grab the third block down. It has like a little star. That star is like a, kind of the same thing as an X for multiplying. So if I put two and then a star and then two, that says two times two. So this is just a little multiplication equation right here. All right, in the second white circle, put a 0.9. In the first white circle, we want our X velocity variable. So go to your orange control circle, excuse me, your dark orange variable circle, Bring out your little x velocity variable you created and stick that in that first white circle. And sorry, this is supposed to be a 0.9. Mine went on as a zero. Make sure that's a 0.9. Okay, two blocks left and then we'll test it all out. We need to go to our blue motion circle. And just like up here where we put a block that says change y by gravity, we're gonna do the same thing. But this time it's change x by x velocity. So in your blue motion circle, go to the bottom and count up nine blocks and you'll find change X by 10. Put that on as your final block. Make sure it's inside that forever loop and it's at the very bottom. And then on top of the 10, we need to put our X velocity variable right there. Okay, this is a great spot to pause the video and make some adjustments. I'm gonna circle the numbers that are great to play around with. So this number seven, that's how high you're going to jump. If you increase that number, you'll jump higher. This number is how fast you're going to fall. Remember to keep that point in there. So try negative 0.2, negative 0.3, negative 0.9, but keep that point in there, okay? The other two numbers to play around with are the one and the negative ones for your X velocity. This is gonna be how fast you're moving side to side. Now, the cool thing about the X velocity code is when you let go of your arrow key, Steve will not immediately stop walking. He'll do a little bit of a skid, okay? So it looks very realistic compared to kind of the beginner code for moving side to side. So pause the video, play around with those numbers and get it set to the speeds that you like. All right. That is our um, platformer and gravity and X velocity code. So I'm going to erase those drawings. All right. Now, up here on my game, I see I have gravity and X velocity. I don't want those, so I'm going to uncheck those so that they don't show up on my game, okay? <clears throat> I love how Steve's little arms move. Okay, next thing we need to do is let's go play with our platforms. So click on your platform sprite. Come up here to your costumes, and we're going to create several different platforms, and these will turn up in each of our levels. So whatever one I have for number one, that's going to be level one. Let's go ahead and make a platform for level two. Now, I kind of like the lava. This is going to be my level two. And level three, I don't really have anything. Level two and level three are kind of the same. So go ahead and add some stuff to this, okay? I'm going to, I want to add some more of these little blocks that I have to jump on. So I'm going to come down here to costume seven. I'm going to grab the, I'm going to click on it, hit copy. And then if I go back to costume three and click in here and select paste, it'll paste that block. I'm going to hit the paste like five or six times. 
All right. On level three, I'm going to create a platform that allows me to jump over the lava. Okay. So there's all sorts of different things you can do. I'm going to, mine's a little sloppy right now um, for the sake of this video, but you can really take your time with these and clean them up, make them look really nice. Then for my fourth level, maybe in this one, I'm going to have a whole bunch of lava. And if I hit that lava, um, I'm going to, you know, that'll kill me or maybe make me start over. So I'm going to put a bunch of lava in here that I have to jump over. Um, I'm using control C and control V right now to copy and paste, but you can use these copy and paste buttons up here. So these platforms can get as in-depth as you want. You could have 20 different levels. You can have so many different types of platforms, but the goal will be every time Steve starts on the left side of the screen, as soon as he gets to the right side of the screen, he'll start a new level. He'll go back to the beginning and our platform will switch to the next level. So pause this and feel free to make as many different platforms as you'd like, okay? I'm gonna keep mine a little bit simple for today. <clears throat> okay, so let's build some code on Steve that tells him whenever he hits the right side of the screen over here to send out a message that it's time to start a new level. All right, so each time my game begins, Steve starts on the left. Now go ahead and get a new green flag, a forever loop and an if then loop. And let's build some code that says, if Steve touches the right side of the screen, send out a message. Okay, now let's figure out what the X number is clear over here on the right side of the screen. So I'm gonna turn my flag on. I'm gonna walk all the way over there. All right, about right here, I can see my X number is 205. So let's go to our operator circle, grab that six block down where the little arrow is pointing at the 50. And then go ahead and grab, let's see, in your blue motion circle, if you scroll down to the bottom and count up three, you have a little X position. Stick that in that first white circle, and then let's put a 205 here, okay? Now this code says, if Steve's X position is ever greater than 205, then what? Well, that's when I wanna send out a message that it's time to start a new level. So go to your uh, yellow event circle and grab the broadcast message block. You can leave this set as message one, or if you're gonna use multiple messages today, you may wanna give it a name so you can keep track. I'm gonna call mine new or next level, okay? And then whenever um, Steve gets the message that it's time to go to the next level, I want him to restart back at the beginning. So I'm gonna grab the when I receive block, and I'm going to say, okay, Steve, whenever you receive the message that you're starting the next level, go back to that beginning spot where you start, which is this blue go to X and Y block right here. So I'm just going to duplicate this real fast, bring that down, move it back up. Or you could just go get a new block and then type in those numbers. Okay, let's test it out. I'm going to walk over to the side and let's see if Steve starts over. Perfect. Okay, see how he just went back to the beginning as soon as I hit that X number? All right, now let's get the platform to actually switch. Go over to your platform sprite, go to your yellow event circle and get when I receive, okay? When I receive my next level message. What do I want to have happen? I want the platform to switch costumes. So let's go up to, to the looks circle and let's get the block that says next costume. That's your sixth block down. I also want to tell the platforms which costume to begin on when the game starts. I want this one called level one. So I'm also going to bring out a green flag and I'm going to say, okay, but whenever the green flag is clicked, set your costume to a certain one. So in the look circle, the fifth block down, that's where you can pick a specific costume. I'm going to say level one. Okay, go ahead and test it out. Turn on your green flag, walk across the screen, and then see if your platform switches. Okay, mine is working. So see how this could be a game that, you know, you could have so many different platforms, different levels. Um, let's see here. I also want to keep track of the levels. So I think I'm going to, hmm, how do I want to do this? I'm going to make a new variable up here. Let's go to our variable circle and make a variable called level. I want this to show up on my game. And I'm going to say, whenever the green flag is clicked, set my level to zero. Okay, and each time Steve sends out the message that it's time to go to the next level, then change that variable by one. 
That way I can actually keep track of which level I'm on. So go ahead and test that out. Make sure that variable is switching for you. Okay, perfect. Now let's say you want some bad guys to show up in certain levels. Let's say I want these skeletons to show up, but not until level two, okay? So I'm gonna tell them, okay, skeletons, when the green flag is clicked, I want you hiding. So in your look circle, um, go get that hide block. It's the sixth one up from the bottom. But then I could say, if my level equals two, show up. So for that, I will need a forever loop and an if then loop. And then I'll need to go to my operator circle and grab an equals sign, okay? This is how I can say, if my level equals two. So I'm gonna put a two there and then go to your variable circle and grab your little level and stick that in there. Okay, if my level equals two, show up. So I've gotta go back to my look circle and grab my show block. Okay, that's down towards the bottom. Now, I kind of want to tell the skeleton where I want him to show up in level two, right? So I'm going to turn the little eyeball button on so that I can actually see. I'm on level two right now. And then I'm going to pick him up. I actually want this skeleton to show up. Put him right there. <clears throat> so I need to get a go to X and Y block. Okay, when he shows up, I want him to go to X and Y. So that's how you can make certain enemies show up in certain levels. If I wanted him to hide when I go to level three, I could just duplicate this entire thing and then switch this to say, when I'm at level three, then I want you to hide, okay? So I would stick a hide block in there. That's how you can get them to go away when it's time to go to the next level. So I'm not gonna go through and do that for every level, but at this point, you should have enough coding knowledge to be able to do that wherever you want. You also could get your skeleton walking back and forth you could add some code on Steve that says, okay, Steve, if you're touching the skeleton, game over, time to restart or time to end the game. Okay, so those are some different ideas. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> the final thing I'm gonna show you is how to end your game, okay? So let's do that on Steve. I'm going to add some code that says, if my levels get up to, let's say level five, that's when I win. So I will need a forever loop and an if then loop. And then just like we did a second ago, I've got to get an equals sign. So I'm going to use my operator circle, bring out that equal sign. And then in my variable circle, I'm going to go get my little level variable. And I'll say, if my level equals five, well, then what do you want to have happen? For me, I'm going to have, I'm going to have Steve say, you win for two seconds and then the game will end. So in my orange control circle, I'm gonna go get my stop all block and stick that right underneath there. Okay, so I didn't build a complete game today because there's so much you could do with this. You can really go crazy with those platforms. You can go crazy with the bad guys. If you're a little bit confused on how to maybe make the lava or the skeletons kill you, I'll show you that really quick. So I'm gonna build this on Steve, or you could build it on your skeleton. It doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm gonna build this on Steve because I'm gonna use a touching block for the skeleton and for the lava. I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So in my forever loop, I need an if then loop. And then go to your sensing circle and grab your touching block, okay? I wanna say, I want to say if Steve is touching the color red or the skeleton, then game over. So how do I get two touching blocks in this uh, shadow? Well, that's where our operator blocks come in. So go to your operator circle and see this block that says shadow and shadow. And then there's another one that says shadow or shadow. That's what we're going to use. We'll actually want the or for this one. Okay. And then put your touching blocks inside both of those shadows. Okay, now I'm going to say if Steve is touching, let's see, if he's touching the skeleton or, oh, you know what? I grabbed the wrong touching block. That second one down, that's where we can pick a color. Or if he's touching the color red. Now, I can't just switch this to a color red and hope it's the right one. I've got to go get the exact color from the lava. So use this little dropper tool and then come up here. See how I have a circle here with a square in the middle? Whatever color is inside that square, that's what I'm selecting. Okay, now this is set to the exact color of my lava. Well, if ever he's touching either of those, then what? 
I'm going to have Steve say a message. He's going to say, oh, shoot, you are dead. Try again. And then the game will end. Okay. I'm going to do stop all. Another option, if you don't want your game to end, maybe you just want Steve to go back to the beginning so he has to try that level again, is you could just put that same little go to X and Y block we were using up here and put that in here. That way, if Steve um, hits an enemy, you don't have to stop the whole game completely. He can just go back to the start and try the level again. So either of those are good options. It depends on how hard you want your game to be. All right, I would love to see this um, game when you're completed with it. So what you can do is up at the top, you can hit the remix button to turn this into your own project. Then if you click the big orange shared button next to it, you can literally just copy and paste the web address into the YouTube comments or on our Facebook page. And then other people can click on that link and they'll be able to pull up your project. They can see your code, test out your game, and I would love to check it out. So if you want to do that, make sure you share that with me. And then just a reminder that we do have live classes um, through a company called OutSchool. So there will also be a link for that down underneath the video in the description. If you want to try a live class with us, those are, a, you know, a great place to meet other kids that have the same interests. And it's also a great place to ask questions and get some direct feedback. All right, guys. Awesome job, everybody. Let me know if you need any help. Send me a message and I'll see you next time. Bye.